Launching and leading, that's what we do. Impacting communities, changing the world, increasing profits. You're a powerhouse girl. We're women who launch and lead. You are listening to Women Who Launch and Lead, the podcast for women ready to change the world by women who are changing the world. Listen in each week on iTunes, Google, Spotify, Breaker, or Stitcher as we connect with women making it happen in life, business, and career. Relate to their struggles, learn their strategies, and celebrate their successes. Then show your love by subscribing and leaving a review. Now, here's your host, Dr. Sharita Weatherspoon. Hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Sharita Weatherspoon, and we are here today for another episode of Women Who Launch and Lead. And today we have with us Alicia Rodman, who is a life coach and speaker and the CEO of Press Toward the Mark Enterprises. And we are so excited to have her here with us today. Thank you for joining us, Alicia. Thank you. Hey. (laughs) So we want to jump right in um, and learn about who you are, what you do, and how you're impacting the world. So tell us all of that. Yeah, I I love the question about impacting the world. So who I am, um, I am a certified life coach. Um, I am a motivational speaker as well. Some may say I'm an inspirational speaker too. And what I do is I work with women who are experiencing a shift in their lives, whether it be internal or external. And what I really do is help them towards their reinvention, whether that be some area of their lives, their health, or their career. Um, Reinvention, you may say, well, what is that about? The way that's linked to impacting the world is so many times as women, right, um, we are the underdog, so to speak, statistically speaking, and I am a Black woman. So even Black women, there's so many things against us. So a lot of times what we're doing is we're holding back, but there's a shift inside to do something else, to change our lives in some way. What do I do? I come alongside and I help coach those things out of them so that they can live. And I know right now it's kind of cliche and say to be your best self, but you know what? Indeed to walk in their greatness and be more happier and fulfilled in their lives. Mm, That's very powerful. Um, And I love the concept of reinvention um, because we have to reinvent ourselves throughout life. Absolutely. Yes. And sometimes we don't recognize that that's necessary, which just causes more stress and distress yes. in our lives. And But reinvention is not a bad thing. Um, I was just listening to um, The War of Art. I was just listening to a new book that I just started listening to. And he came up with the right word. And he talked about resistance, right? Mm-hmm. Whenever it's time for us to change, we may know inside of us it's time for the reinvention. It's time for the change. However, because we've lived a certain way for X number of years, Mm -hmm. there's resistance that comes. But I feel like, what is it about? It's about a decision and it is about a commitment. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to make that decision and be committed to it, then I can then that's where I can step in and I can help you get along there. But that resistance is totally... That's natural. It's like built inside of us, a defense mechanism, like, no, 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 I've been comfortable right here. Don't try to change me. But um, anyway, that that's, that's what happens because, you know, change is good, but it's not necessarily easy. Mm, it, yeah, <laughs> it's not necessarily easy, <laughs> even when it's good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so how did you get started in this work, um, you know, as, as a life coach, um, but then even identifying how you were going to spe- specialize or niche down in that particular field. Mm. Um, so this journey, it was a dark and stormy night. No, just kidding. <laughs> I <laughs> I'm full of the corny jokes. Get ready to laugh. So it was, uh, this journey really started, I'm going to say, over 12 years ago when I said I experienced, well, basically I experienced some life coaching in a group coaching environment when I didn't even know what it was. And I was like, wow, I want to do that thing. Mm -hmm. 
but I kept putting it off, right? What did we say? Change is hard, even when it's good. And finally became committed to it. There was a whole big wave of how I came to it. Now, how did I niche down? I'll tell you something. I niche down by <laughs> organically seeing what would happen. You hear the chuckle because I am just like felt so anti-niche. I will not have a niche. I will not. And so I said, okay, let me do this. I said, let me see who's drawn to me. Let me see the type of women that come to me. And you know what, Dr. Sharita, the type of women that came to me were women experiencing shifts in need of reinvention. And when I began to kind of pull back the curtain, so to speak, mm -hmm. I don't know, what do you do? Pull back a curtain or a screen or something. Anyway, I pulled it back. I was like, oh my gosh, what have people said to me over the years? They have said to me, wow, Alicia, you're the queen of reinvention because there have been so many, I, I was not, there have been so many changes in my life. I started off as a teacher and I was not the one who was going to stay in the classroom for like 25, this would have made 22 years and I would not be eligible for retirement for like another, I guess, eight to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So therefore that was not going to be me. And I kept evolving because I wanted to. And I noticed that the women who came to me were just that. I call them paper perfect because on paper, everything looks perfect. Mm -hmm. but they knew that there was a shift that needed to happen. So that's how I did it. I did it by being kind of anti-niche and seeing who will be drawn to me. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I, I know what my question was, but I'm going to pull on something that you said okay. um, that wasn't directly related to the question, <laughs> but I okay. thought it was good. <laughs> what about the girl, you got plenty of those types of answers coming up. Go ahead. <laughs> so you said that you kept evolving because you wanted to. Mm. And I just think that is such a powerful statement um, because one, it, it speaks to the power that we have within ourselves to create the lives that we mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. regardless of circumstances and situations we can change we Absolutely. can grow we can develop we can evolve if we want to yes 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 the desire has to be there yeah absolutely yeah and um, that that makes the the challenges with the change quote unquote easier <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> to, to deal right. with because mm -hmm. the desire is there. So even in our relationships, when we're dealing with people who, you know, we're, we're wanting to see them evolve or change in some way, and it's just not happening and we're getting mm. frustrated and they may be saying they can't, they can't, they can't. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. <laughs> birds, and this is something I, I always say all the time in nearly every talk that I give, and people know this a lot, like, I feel like a lot of people know this, but to know it and to demonstrate it, words, your words, mm -hmm. how powerful they are, and, and when you're talking about people say, no, I can't, but I, I, I can't. Right, you know why you can't? Because she said you can't, so absolutely, you can't. Right. Right. You know why I could? Because I thought I could, and I said I could, so I did. That's mm -hmm. really what it's about, those words. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, that was powerful. So, ladies who are tuning in, I, I want to make sure you catch that. You know, you can evolve if you want to. Evolve. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I want to say this, um, even as you're saying it, I'm about to life coach myself. So, so check out what I'm about to say. I said, I said that because I wanted to. To tell you, there's a reason why that I wanted to, there's a reason why that comes up when I talk. And it's because um, being in, I think you and I are in the same generation, it's Generation X. Mm -hmm. Our parents worked at a particular job and that was the job that they worked at. Well, I, I'm just going to say, I'm going to use a blanketed statement. Maybe your parents didn't necessarily do this, but I'm just saying in general, it's like, you got the job. Yay. That's your career. And you stay there right. until you retire. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Generation X, our generation is the last that's really doing that because the one, the millennials that come right after their path is going to be much different. Mm -hmm. So why am I saying that? Because when I first got my teaching job, that was for the first career out of um, college, 
I got there and I said, okay, so I'll stay here for 25 years because that's what you're supposed to do. Listen, that's what you're supposed to do. My words here. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I started getting that itch and I left after seven years, so you could call it the seven year itch. Mm -hmm. When I started getting that itch, even leading up to that, it was, it wasn't what everyone was doing my colleagues were there to stay and nothing is wrong with that. But it seemed that I was sw swimming upstream mm -hmm. when everyone else was saying, no, go downstream. So when I say, cause I wanted to, I think that's still that lingering thing that, that grappled with the fact that I wanted to do something. I wanted to leave my very comfortable, you know, fine paying, because I wasn't in one of these low paying districts, fine paying teacher position that was very comfortable, where I had very good insurance. I had tenure. I couldn't have gotten fired. I could not have gotten fired mm -hmm. unless I did something illegal, which I wasn't doing, yeah. to evolve and to do something else. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's just, that was, that was tough. That wasn't, um, and so I say that to the ladies as, as they listen to this today, because even though we're grown, right, there's still peer pressure as adults. Yes, yes. Everyone, else, everyone else is doing this. Everyone else is staying here until they retire. And quite frankly, I'm still friends with all those teachers. And guess what? They are still teaching. Right. And that's fine. But I had to do something different. So even to the ladies that are listening, I would say, when you feel that resistance and it looks around you like no one is doing what you're doing, to be encouraged to make that decision and make that commitment. Mm, yes, absolutely. Because the bottom line is um, that you have to live your life. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be happy with the life you are living. So yeah. succumbing to the pressure of what everyone else is doing around you I mean, it may appease them or make you feel more comfortable because you're fitting in. Yes. But at what cost? What is it costing wow. you to fit wow. in? Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that, that question. What is the cost? Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the, my coaching questions. I love that. What's the cost of yeah. you not doing this? Right. Right. Now, how, so we talked about how you got started and how you niched down. Um, how has your process been? Um, like what challenges have you experienced along this entrepreneurial path? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. Um, the, the challenges and, and the journey, if you will, the challenges that come along with that is, are not much different from my life. So this is how I describe my, my brain. I say my mind, actually. Mm -hmm. So imagine a beautiful portrait. Then I want you to rip it up into a thousand, a million pieces, and I want you to throw them up in the air in the wind. Okay, that's my mind. So yeah. what do I need? I need structure. Mm -hmm. I need to bring those beautiful pieces together and put them in a structured, uh, a structured way. And, had, and that's in my life. And so that definitely translates. My business is not immune to it. So um, the challenges for me have been, rather than the, the art or the practice of coaching or the art of the pra or the practice of public speaking, it's more so been the back end of it, the behind the scenes, the structure for setting up the business, um, even realizing when it was time to get help, thinking, I can do this myself, I'm strong. <laughs> no, you need a team. You need some help, Alicia, because you're, you're missing out on things. So I'll, I'll give you an example of a challenge. Um, when I finally broke down and got a, a virtual assistant, <laughs> when I started, she said, okay, well, my, it was my first virtual assistant because now I'm on number two. Um, so she said, okay, pull all your, you know, your contacts and, and all that together. Well, number one, they were all in different places. Mm -hmm. Talking about lack of structure. Uh, number two, uh, I started to realize, I'm going to tell you, Dr. Sharita, I'm sure I lost thousands of dollars of business because of not following up, not because I didn't want to, but because I wasn't organized in how I was doing things. Mm -hmm. So that's been for me, more so than the art, it's been 
the the business structure and actually i just invested in myself even more recently too to be in an um an academy to help me even bring things together even more mm -hmm. um i in i am just beginning to walk in my greatness and and listen i'm seeing this on purpose like this on purpose right because as women a lot of times what is the culture it's kind of like be be humble you know kind of take it down a little. Mm -hmm. We can be confident. Listen, I, I'm not going to run track fast. I, I'm not going to be a fast swimmer. Um, there's a lot of things that I may not do the best, but I know where my greatness lies. So I want to make sure that my structures and my, the, the business aspect of it um, are in place and built up so that I can really begin to walk in my greatness and do the thing that I've been called to do. Mm. So, <laughs> and I'm gonna pull on something. Okay. Uh, just something you said. <laughs> okay, okay, pull on it, girl. I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, I may not be the best at a lot of things, but I know where my greatness lies. Mm. Now, Ladies who are tuning in, the, the conversation itself is good. The answers to the questions are good. And there are lots of lessons that you can pull. Mm -hmm. I am tapping into some of the things that I think might be flying by you. Mm. Because you're focused on hearing the actual answer to the question mm -hmm. versus all of the power that's built into the answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yes, we know that, you know, Alicia's challenge was with business structure and kind of handling the behind the scenes. That's the answer to the question, okay? Mm -hmm. But she said that she knows where her greatness lies. And what's important about that is that when you're running a business, there's a lot, there, there's a lot that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And when you're starting off, you may have to do it all by yourself. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you're going to need to pull in people who know where their greatness lies and yeah. can handle the things where you don't operate so great. Mm -hmm. So that you can focus in on where your greatness lies because that's where your purpose is and that's where your profit is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So yeah. I want to make sure you all catch that lesson. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you for breaking that down. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so you brought on a virtual assistant. So that was kind of one of the, the strategies or, um, um, you know, things that you put in place to help deal with that. What else did you do to kind of help get the business management side under control? Well, right now, believe it or not, I've just enrolled uh, relatively recently into a, um, a an entrepreneurial leadership academy. So mm -hmm. it's a year long program that I've just invested in myself. In. Uh, and I, I want to say this, I want to say this because I'm finding myself having to just kind of speak into women and say this, that there is a time if you're talking about running a business, right? there is a time that you truly have to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know that logically, but how many times are we hearing, we may hear people, you know, ladies say, some other queens say, um, no, well, I don't have it. S sometimes you got to speak by faith. You have to operate by faith. What did we talk about? We said that it's about a decision and a commitment. Notice I didn't say the resources. Because sometimes you have to make the decision first and the commitment first, and then the resources will follow. Um, what is like the, the book, The Alchemist, if anyone's read it, that's listening. And if you haven't, basically, I finally read it like five times over the past six months. But uh, there's this expression that I had heard for years, but I didn't know where it came from. It said something like this, that when you make a decision, the universe, it says, conspires to help you. But, but before it being conspiring to help you, so to speak, the decision has to be made. Right. So if you sit back 
And if you say, well, I can't, you know, put this in place for my business. I can't, because I, I can't afford, and I'm going to use that word. I'm going to jump right there. Let's go right there. Mm-hmm. I can't afford to do this. Let's go back to even what you talked about. Then you won't be able to afford to do it. And it won't probably come because a lot of times that feeling that you feel, that shift that you're feeling, that, that unction is, is telling you now's the time. That's your alarm clock of destiny telling you, I'm waiting right here. I just need you to um, make the decision to get up and make that decision not to hit snooze. Because a lot of time when you hit that snooze button, that thing in that way never comes back quite like that. Right. I don't know if that makes any right. sense. But, um, but so I, I, yes, I answered the question. And then of course, that's what I do. I add more to it. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And I want to add on to that, um, that there, there's power in making the decision, Mm -hmm. but people make decisions all the time and nothing follows that. So Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I've decided I'm going to lose 10 pounds. (laughs) and didn't do anything after I made the decision. Mm -hmm. So there is decision, but then there is a demonstration of the decision that has to follow that. And I believe that's when the universe conspires to Mm -hmm. help Mm -hmm. you demonstrate the decision. So that means get up and do something. Mm -hmm. Call somebody, sign up for something, send an email. (laughs) Yes. Yes. something that supports the decision you just made. Um, maybe some people have heard of what I'm about to say. It goes something like this. Faith without works mm-hmm. is dead. Mm-hmm. Right? You believe it, mm-hmm. but you did nothing about it. So right. it's dead. It's not even, it, it's non-existent. Well, yeah, maybe it, it was almost alive, but then it's dead. Right. Absolutely. Right. And now I like your analogy with the, with the alarm, um, because I, you know, I, I live in a house with other people right? <laughs> now, my my husband gets up before I do, um, his alarm will go off. I hear his alarm go off. Sometimes he'll hit the snooze button mm. and he'll go back to sleep. I'm still up. I'm awake and I'm ready to go now. So you might hit the snooze button, but somebody else might be hearing the same alarm and decide to get up and take action. Mm. And now what was meant for you is now going to somebody else who decided to wake up and take (laughs) action. Oh my God, Sharita, Sharita, Sharita. Okay, 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 girl. I, I want to say this as you're speaking, as you're speaking, oh my goodness, it's this thing, right? Where I, every time I feel like the story of Queen Esther keeps coming, I keep seeing so many different um, perspectives of it. If any of your um, listeners don't know, please Google Queen Esther and you'll hear the story because I'm just going to take a portion of it. <laughs> so there's a time where Queen Esther's cousin, who was her guardian, Mordecai, says to her, listen, you've got to do this. It was something happening. Folks, if you Google it, you can find out. But there was a big thing happening, something like genocide about to happen. Mm -hmm. And he says to to Queen Esther, don't you think for a minute that if you don't take care of this and if you don't go to the king, God will put someone else will take your place and do what it is you're supposed to do. Now, granted, We can say now, we can say the footnote, it may not be exactly the way you were going to do it, but the job will get done. So it has to. Right. So just (laughs) now when you said you're ready to go and your husband is press snooze, folks, ladies, queens, as you listen to this, don't you think that that thing is going to wait for you because it has to get done and someone else will be called and someone else will be raised up to take your and and i want to say your place but i'll put air quotes around your place right because we are all individual but someone else will take the place how about that the place of you to do the thing that you were called to do and that you decided to hit the snooze button on Mm. yes (laughs) i'm trying to calm myself down i love the conversation (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, ladies, I hope you are catching all of this goodness. Uh, so I, I don't even know how many lessons and jewels have been dropped so far in this conversation, but um, you might want to replay, <laughs> pull out pen and paper, <laughs> jot down some notes. There's some good stuff going on here today. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. So, so here you are today in your business. Um, how many years in are you now? Uh, you know, it's a baby still. It's a toddler. It's one and a half, about... Uh, Going on a year and a half, officially, it was January of 2019. Okay, awesome, awesome. And how, how do you feel about your business now? Oh my gosh, that's a good oh my gosh. Um, I am so excited. Because I am a visionary, I see where I'm headed. That's why it was important for me to invest in myself instead of, um, you know, flapping around like that fish on the deck in terms of the business aspect of it, because I know where I'm headed and I'm excited about it. I have seen what I've seen already and it's about to expand and multiply. However, I have seen women's lives be changed because of the work that I have done with them. I, I mean, like burdens being lifted, people all of a sudden looking differently. Mm -hmm. I'm like, one day I said to myself, Sharita, I was like, um, this work is priceless. I should be charging a million dollars. Oh my gosh, these people look different, you know? So, so how do I feel? I feel so excited. And so that's why you, I'm sure who was ever listening, you can hear the excitement as I speak, but that's why I know I have to get the, I have to continue to um, refine the business structure of it because I don't want to not be able to help people because I couldn't get myself together in the business structure. And I was just flapping around like that fish on the deck. And my greatness was just being just kind of out there and just, oh, I help a couple of people here and there. No, mm -hmm. like I'm going to help, uh, like I actually say millions, that's written millions mm -hmm. of women for their lives to be changed and that reinvention to happen or and for them to walk down their path of greatness in any area of their life, their health, their career. So how do I feel about my business? I am excited because I have, I have been to the mountaintop and I have seen the <laughs> promised land. Oh, and no, unlike Moses, I'm going into it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I didn't break no tablets. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I love the expression of your excitement about your business because I, you know, in my work, like I want all of the women I work with to feel that way about mm -hmm their businesses um, because so many people don't. And yet we know, like, we know people don't like their jobs. You know, a lot of people right. don't like right. the work that they do, but then some people go into business and they're in business for business, you know, like, okay, this product, this service, there's a large market. I know I can sell it for this amount. I'm going to make this right. profit. And it's, it's just strictly business for them. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, like it's all science, all the science of business. There's no art of the business. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. And I, and, and that's, and there's nothing wrong with that. The world has to move, you know, things yes. have to be done. Services have to be provided. That, there's not a problem with that at all. But my heart is towards, you know, women who want to go into business with a purpose in mind, mm. with an impact in mind. And want to make a difference in whoever it is that they're serving or however it is that yes. they're serving, whether it's coaching, whether it's consulting, speaking, whether it's their books, whether it's providing a service, a retail store, whatever it is, but it's really, it's bigger than the product mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. for them, you know? Um, but if you don't manage the science of the business well, yes you can get lost in it and feel still feel unfulfilled in your work and yes. getting, getting up to do your business. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. So I love the fact that you are excited about where you are and where you're going. Um, 
in that, like you can, you can see that. Yes. You can see that oozing from you. And I want the women who are tuning in, who are launchers, you know, they're entrepreneurs to recognize that your business can and should be really fulfilling and exciting for you. And yes, there may be times that you're challenged and you're overwhelmed and you want to pull your hair out, but that should not be the day to day for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as you were just saying that I, I feel that's why I felt so fortunate over the years because um, I came from the type of family that they're just like, do what's in your heart that you feel you should do, right? So it wasn't like, well, you have to be this because of this, but it was like, do what's going to make your heart happy. And I believe because of, I saw that how my grandparents were supportive of my mom. My mom was supportive of all of us. I only have sisters, um, whatever it was, never kind of like, you must do this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the kids like, cause that still happens in families. Like this is what you really need to do. Yet the person isn't happy. And what does that lead to an unfulfilled life? Mm -hmm. So just, I feel privy that I am in touch with do what's going to, what I'm being called to do. And, and I just want to say what you're talking about is I'm going to use the word being called to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not out of obligation, right? Because obligation may not make you happy if you feel you have to run the family business because that's what your family does. You're doing it out of obligation and that fulfillment, that, that will be that emptiness in your heart. Mm -hmm. But if you feel called to do that thing and you begin to walk in it, that's where your satisfaction comes from. And then recognizing where the gaps are and being able to say, okay, well, this is where the gaps are and this is where I need help so that I can grow in fulfillment, so I can grow in my satisfaction, so I can grow in my happiness mm -hmm. while I change lives around the world. Right. Right. <laughs> Good stuff, Alicia. <laughs> All right. So let's switch gears a little bit and um, talk about Alicia a little bit more. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, I'm an expert. <laughs> Ask me anything. <laughs> so how, how do you find and maintain balance in your life? Um, so... I actually, I'm going to say this. One time I had to go and speak on um, to a group of women who was at a women's breakfast, a leadership breakfast, and the topic was balance. Mm -hmm. So this is what I said, Dr. Sharina, and I'll say this. It, I, I've said it again and again in my different talks. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We forget about what balance is, and now we look at alignment. I look at alignment for mm -hmm. in my life. And what that is, because I'm going to tell you, when I tried to do, when I tried to be about balance, mm -hmm. it never worked because I could never get that scale right. But what is balance? You know, what is this over here? No, but this is lower. No, take this off and put this over here. Oh, no, but this is going down. When I talk about alignment, I look at, you know, my, my actions, my heart. What does my heart say? And does everything else fall in line with it? Mm -hmm. How do my actions fall in line with who I am? How does my speech fall in line with who I am? How do my thoughts fall in line with who I am? And if I have that alignment, I feel that then everything else falls into place. And I don't need to worry about balance when I have alignment. Mm, that's really good. Awesome. What is one of your favorite self-care strategies? Mm, mm, mm. Um, for me, I like, <laughs> it's so is not a strategy. It's just what I do. So, uh, I, I like listening, listening to books that really makes me happy. Um, books and podcasts. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is when I walk the dog, which I have to do twice a day, um, I make sure I'm listening and I'm just taking it in and being present. Mm -hmm. being present maybe I should say being present is a strategy um to your high energy listeners I am like up here there this is a podcast so they're not seeing me but I have my hand above my head and it's just moving and moving and moving mm -hmm. 
my brain goes a hundred miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So sometimes being in the present is, it takes effort. But right. when I am, it feels amazing. And to me, that is a self-care strategy. So how does that relate to listening to books? When I'm walking the dog, I can't do anything else. I, it's just me and it's him. I live by, I'm looking right now out of my window at the Hudson River and I walk by the Hudson River and it's just me, him and the book. And when the sun is shining, forget it, I'm on cloud nine. Even if it's 20 degrees, I feel great. <laughs> and it just makes my heart feel good. So that to me is, it's being present and being what, what is making me happy at that moment. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So where do you see yourself five years from now? That's a great question. I feel like I'm getting a job. Well, um, I see myself advancing in the company. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> in five years from now, um, I will be living the majority of the time in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I have a love affair with Kenya, not with anyone else in it. <laughs> just yet. <laughs> Somebody said, speak it, make the decision, be committed to it. Okay. Um, I see myself living in Kenya most of the time. Um, I will be a multimillionaire at that point. Um, impacting in droves. So having, continuing, because next year I'll start having them retreats um, where women will heal, awaken, and transform by way of uh, my coaching and my speaking. And I see myself really entrenched in what I do, that it's not just my business, mm -hmm. it is my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm living out my life's purpose. Um, and especially being in King is a big part of that. And in five years, I actually do want to be with, I've, I've been in some failed relationships. <laughs> it's my my section of the book was easy um and uh and and i see that as my life in five years that's why i'm so excited so when you ask me you know how do i feel about my business now i'm excited because i have seen what that looks like i have felt what that looks like that is how i feel about it and that's where i see myself in five years <laughs> I love that. Um, so we're going to switch to wordplay now. Mm. And I'm going to share two words with you that I want you to share your thoughts and reflections on. So the first is evolution. Mm. Immediately me came to mind. I don't want to think too much about it. Immediately me came to mind. I came to mind, but the word me came to mind, mm -hmm. um, evolution, because just going back to the way we started our conversation, mm -hmm. I have evolved. And what I'm doing is being that that's a part of me, I am helping women, other queens, I call them, to be able to go through their own evolution. And seeing that brings me joy. So that is what I think of for evolution. Mm, awesome. I have to change changes. <laughs> now the second word is resistance. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First thing that actually came to my mind is like every day, all day. Uh, just because it's it's a fight. Listen, I talk the way I talk, because this is who I am, right? So you're hearing, you're listening to this, listeners. So this is how I am, basically. However, it doesn't, just because I'm excited about something, just because I am operating in my gift does not mean that no resistance comes. Mm -hmm. So it is a fight, whether it be internally, and sometimes that external resistance comes, right? Because when you're, evolving during your evolution, you are breaking through. You're breaking through, you're going to that next level and that's resistance does come. So um, resistance, it's there and, and I know that I need to fight. So, so mm -hmm. sometimes the fight is hard and sometimes the fight is easy, 
but it's there and it does exist and I recognize it. And, and I'm glad it comes because you know what? It keeps me on my toes and it helps me to be a better coach to the women who experience that during their evolution. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 absolutely. All right. So Alicia, I know that you have something special for our listeners. So tell us what that is and how they can get it. Well, I actually dropped a little hint about breaking through. So what I do is a 15 minute breakthrough session. And through this session, what you walk away with is clarity on your vision and really what you need to do next in your life. We, we don't have to flounder around like that fish on deck. We can have, we can actually begin to start lining things up. So what do I do in 15 minutes? You're like 15 minutes. Yup. In 15 (laughs) minutes, we identify, we clarify, and you walk away with that. So that is available through Alicia Coaches. As soon as you go there, there is a banner, aliciacoaches.com, aliciacoaches.com. There's a banner that says schedule your free breakthrough session. So if anyone's listening to this and your heart has been pierced, you're like, yeah, I know that shift has happened. I know something has to change. Well, then let's sit down together, well, via uh, Zoom, and uh, let's sit down together and let's have a breakthrough so you can begin to evolve to your new self, your reinvention. Awesome. So ladies, make sure you take advantage of that. If you feel a shift coming or Mm -hmm. need a shift to come, or, (laughs) you know, you just, just shift, shift, shift. But you know, you know, you want something different in your life. Yes. You need some help figuring out what that is and how to get there mm-hmm. and work your way through it. Reach out to Alicia and take advantage of her breakthrough session. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes. So, how can our listeners connect with you online? Otherwise, just to you know, stay in contact with you, see what you're up to, um, follow you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can find me on Facebook at Life Coach Alicia, A-L-I-C-I-A, Life Coach Alicia. And I am on Instagram under the same handle, Life Coach Alicia. Um, You can look me up there and please, um, I encourage you to follow me and um, be encouraged. And even if you don't take me up on my breakthrough, I know that you will be encouraged, motivated, and inspired by that which I post on the on social media. So I look forward to your being in touch, listeners. Awesome. Awesome. So Alicia, we are so grateful to have had you today. Um, The conversation has been powerful and great and funny. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate you you taking time to join us and sharing about your journey um, and your experiences with our listeners. Mm. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And to all of our listeners, we thank you for tuning in this time and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for Women Who Launch and Lead with Dr. Sharita Weatherspoon. Be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode and leave your positive review so we can continue to bring you impactful and powerful content. Don't forget to connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Women Who Launch and Lead. Learn more about how you can work with Dr. Sharita at sharitaweatherspoon.com. As always, learn, launch, lead.